Are you either interested in working in cybersecurity compliance or are you already working in compliance right now? In this video, we're going to talk about the best certifications that you should be looking at for 2022. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good and here on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. Cybersecurity compliance is one of those areas that people either love or they hate it. The main reason is that because these kind of jobs tend to be less technical and focus much more on processes and documentation. I know that policy isn't a sexy thing like hacking a server for root level access, but the truth is that these jobs are extremely important and they're increasingly more important as new regulations and requirements evolve. These kind of jobs impact the strategic direction and overall management of the organization. And it's these jobs that also help prevent any kind of regulatory fines or legal issues with regards to cybersecurity and technology. I know you're probably wondering about salary and typically at the lower levels in these kind of jobs, they don't command as much pay as a technical or engineering based job. But as you get into higher level positions, they actually end up being things like the chief information security officer or director level. These kind of jobs are much more focused on governance, risk and compliance than they are with the technical nitty gritty details. The types of people that we see in GRC roles include entry level people because the bar is usually lower to break into this area. So things like compliance analysts or GRC analysts all the way up to very senior level people who might just be exhausted with keeping up how technology changes and they just want to focus on the strategic aspect of things. With all this knowledge, let's go ahead and talk about the list. To create the rank, I looked at the following things. So job postings, cost to prepare for the certification, cost for the exam, experience requirements, and study time, and just the overall market and how things are doing. So number five is going to be the easiest to obtain, and that means that the return isn't going to be as great long term. And number one is the hardest to obtain, but it's going to provide the best value. Now we've got that out of the way, let's do this. The Security Plus from CompTIA comes in at number five. This is arguably one of the most common security certifications that we see in cybersecurity and especially in GRC type roles. Even if you hate the Security Plus, you can't deny that it shows up in job postings everywhere. The Security Plus is seen as an entry level security certification because it teaches you about the basics of cybersecurity without diving too much into one vendor or technology. Okay, let's take a look at the website. As we look at the Security Plus website here, we'll scroll down and take a little bit deeper look. So if you wanna know what you're gonna learn on this, attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, architecture and design, implementation, operations and incident response, governance, risk, and compliance. And this is a very broad entry-level security certification. If we scroll down here, we can see different companies that have people on staff with the security certification. So Target, Netflix, Splunk, and the different job titles. Security Administrator, System Administrator, Security Engineer. You're going to see a lot of different job titles with this actual certification. You scroll down here. This is the exam details. And you can, of course, get practice questions so you can see kind of where your knowledge is at before you even start it. And the current version is this SY0601. It came out in 2020. Get a maximum of 90 questions, multiple choice and performance based. So things like drag and drop and 90 minutes to answer all the questions. 750 is a passing score. And usually what happens with this is they retire these certifications after three years. So it came out late 2020. So it's gonna be around 2023 that it's gonna expire. And they give you a good window before, so you know, about six months usually. And then the cost, 381 US dollars. Now let me show you my ranking for the Security Plus. All right, so you can see on my screen here, the results for the Security Plus. I went to indeed.com. I had over 53,000 results for Security Plus. This is one where it's kind of common to get a lot of results, some that aren't related and some that are, but it brings back a ton of results. The cost for prep, reasonably, you're probably gonna spend $80 if you self-study. The exam costs 381 US dollars. There's no experience requirement. And what I predict you're gonna take to prepare for it it's probably about one to two months if you put in a reasonable amount of time. It could take you a little bit more, could take you a little bit less depending on where you're at, but I think that's pretty reasonable. The cap from ISC Squared comes in at number four. The certified authorization professional isn't something that's frequently talked about as some certifications, but if you're dealing with NIST risk management framework, it's an absolute must. To be honest, 
The NIST risk management framework tends to be adopted by more mature companies and companies as they're beginning to mature. And it covers a wide spectrum of security controls that you need to have implemented to be secure. So we also call the NIST risk management framework RMF. And it's the most comprehensive implementation of cybersecurity that exists in the industry right now. And it's absolutely something that you need to be familiar with regardless of your role in cybersecurity. Let's take a look at the website for the CAP. All right, so this is the website for the CAP. If we go ahead and we scroll down here, you can see right away they're talking about governance, risk, and compliance. This certification is perfect for those kind of jobs. Scroll down here and we click this number two. We can see the different domains. So again, this is really based on the NIST Risk Management Framework, or RMF. And you can see that in the domains. If we go ahead and we go to Get Certified, we can see this does have an experience requirement of two years. So you really need to pay attention to that if you're gonna go after the certification. Now let me show you the rankings for the CAP. All right, on the screen here, you have the results for the CAP. Job posting results, 660 postings. This one doesn't always return a lot of postings because it's a little bit lesser known, but it's still very, very relevant. The cost for prep, about 35 bucks to buy the official book, so not too bad. Exam cost, you're looking at just under $600. It does have a two year experience requirement, so keep that in mind. And then study time, it's probably gonna take you about three months. The CISP or the CISSP from ISC Square comes in at number three. Certified Information System Security Professional is considered the gold standard when it comes to cybersecurity certifications. It covers all the different domains in cybersecurity, from physical security to the more technical aspects. The CISP is focused on how to manage all these different areas so you don't necessarily need to be a technical guru in order to pass the exam. It's pretty hard to not have heard of the CISP if you're in cybersecurity because it really should be the goal of any professional in our industry. And it tends to actually open up a lot of job opportunities that increase salaries very quickly if you have it. Just to be clear, don't expect to be an expert because you passed the exam and you got the certification, but you are gonna get exposed to a lot of different areas. Let's look at the website for the CISP. All right, so this is the website for the CISSP or the CISP. If we go ahead and we scroll down here, you can see they do have a article about salary. So if we open that up, it does give us an idea of some different salaries that we might expect. Again, whenever you get something like this, especially when it's from the vendor, take it with a grain of salt because it does vary based on the source. But these are pretty reasonable numbers if you have a decent amount of experience. So keep that in mind. If we go back here to the actual page for the certification, and we scroll down, we can see some different job titles that are gonna have this. So these are all cybersecurity kind of jobs, auditor, architect, consultant, manager, director, chief information security officer. If we go ahead and register and prepare and look at the domains, again, this covers everything in cybersecurity, all the domains that you could think of, physical security, security operations, testing. If we go to get certified, you can see you do need five years of experience. Now there is a way to get a waiver for a year by having either another certification or a degree, and you can check out the requirements here, but just keep that in mind. This does have a pretty extensive experience requirement that they do validate. Now let me show you my rankings for the CIS. All right, here we have the results for the CISSP or the CIS. You can see over 20,000 results on ND.com, about a hundred bucks for prep. And again, this is self-study stuff, so buying the books. Exam cost, you're looking at $749. Four to five years of experience are required. And then about four months of prep. Again, this depends on where you're at. Could take you a little bit less, could take you a little bit more, but I think that's pretty reasonable. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also remember to check the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. The CISA or the CISA from ISACA comes in at number two. The Certified Information Systems Auditor is very focused on identifying risk from technologies, systems, and processes within our organization. Auditing is a huge part of GRC roles and identifying risk that we can then decide how to handle it is crucial in the overall management of cybersecurity. The CIS is very useful in management level jobs and consulting cybersecurity jobs. For example, are you able to step back and evaluate potential risks that exist in your organization? That's really what the CIS is focused on, and it will open your eyes to focusing not just on the technical aspects of cybersecurity. And that's a critical skill if you wanna work in high-level jobs. Let's take a look at the CISA website. All right, this is the website for the CISA or the CISA. If we scroll down here, you can see the different domains. So auditing, governance, 
this is really about that governance, risk, and compliance part of cybersecurity. It's not about the nitty gritty technical details that you might find in like a Cisco certification. If we scroll down here a little bit further and we click this apply for certification, this will give us a little bit more details about what we need. So what I want you to really focus on is that there is an experience requirement for this certification. It's a minimum of five years of experience and there are ways to get substitutions for up to three years. So keep that in mind. Just like on the CISSP and the CAP, there are experience requirements for this certification. Now let me show you my rankings on the CISA. And here we have the results for the CISA or the CISA. Over 10,000 job results on Indeed. About 111 bucks for the actual official book. Exam costs you 760 bucks. If you're a member of ISACA, you can get it at less cost. But that's the non-member price. Two to five years of experience are required. And depending on if you have waivers, that will depend on how much you need of that. And then about three months is pretty reasonable for prep time. The PMP from PMI comes in at number one. The Project Management Professional is a certification that's all about managing projects. And although it's not specifically about cybersecurity, we do projects all the time. And especially in GRC, if you want to be that senior level professional or a manager, then you're going to have to achieve the PMP. Some organizations and definitely in larger organizations, project management is its own job role. And it's not uncommon for projects to need to reach a certain level of impact or budget for you to actually get a project manager, which means that you're on the hook for everything else. So it really helps to know how to run projects efficiently. Also, if you have a PMP, it's going to open up a lot of job opportunities in tech and not just in cybersecurity. More opportunities is generally better for both pay and flexibility. Let's take a look at the website for the PMP. All right, this is the website for the PMP. If we scroll down here, one of the things I want to bring up is there is an experience requirement here. So if you have a four-year degree, you can have 36 months of leading projects and 35 hours of project management training or education, or you can have the CAPM certification. The CAPM is basically the little brother of the PMP. Otherwise, you could have a high school diploma or associate's degree, 60 months of leading projects, and 35 hours of project management education or training, or the CAPM certification. So keep that in mind, the PMP is actually very difficult to get because you have a lot of things that you have to accumulate in your career to even qualify. Now let me show you the rankings for the PMP. Now you can see the results for the PMP. Over 20,000 job results, Cost for prep, $700. Now this is for the official course, and I would recommend doing that if you're gonna go for this certification. The exam cost, $555. Five years of experience required, and then about four months of prep time. Question of the day, which of these cybersecurity certifications are you gonna pursue in 2022? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked about the best cybersecurity certifications for GRC and compliance types roles that you should be looking at for 2022. Remember, there's a lot of factors that you should consider when you're looking at the best cybersecurity certifications for your career. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.